careful who you allow to lay hands on you. I don't need nobody laying hands on me that's got a doubting spirit. Uh, tell you, neighbor, you can't let everybody pray for you. Be seated. You got to be careful always running around when you get to going through trouble telling folk, pray for me. Y'all keep us up in prayer. I don't even know if you pray every day. I don't even know how you pray. Matter of fact, I don't know if you believe the word or not. If I ask somebody to pray for me, I got to know that you know what you're doing. You know one thing Jesus understood about his disciples that every pastor need to understand. He knew he wasn't going to be with them always. Oh, I said he wasn't going to be with them always. He wasn't going to be able to, to, to grab the hand and walk them through every trial. Oh, I'm talking right up in here. Because some of us, we think that's the job of a pastor, to grab your hand and walk you through all of your trials. Oh, Lord, have mercy. What's going to happen when you depend too much on the pastor? What's going to happen when you put too much confidence in your prayer partner? See, Jesus understood that I'm not always going to be with y'all. And so I need to talk to you about some things because they have been looking at the life of Jesus. And one thing they noticed about Jesus was that when he prayed to the Father, he got results. Oh, I'm talking about even when Jesus prayed and seemingly he was asking the Father to do something crazy or something that seemed impossible, the disciples noticed that every time he prayed, the father answered him. Oh, y'all remember at the graveside of Lazarus, you had folk laughing at him when he told him that this man is not dead, but yet sleeps. Oh, you remember the story? He went to the graveside of Lazarus and began to talk to the father in the graveyard. See, sometimes you gotta talk to the father in a rough place. Sometimes you got to talk to the father in a dry place. And he stood outside of the grave and began to shout, Lazarus, come forth. Folk were looking at him, no doubt, like some of y'all looking at me. Who do this man think he is? He talking to somebody dead, and dead folk can't hear. But Jesus knew that the father would give him what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying this is the year to call back something that you thought was dead. Oh, my God. This going to be the year that we're going to bring something back. <laughs> yeah, folk thought it was over, but I'm about to talk to it. Folk thought it was said and done, but I'm about to speak to this thing. It ain't dead. Come alive. I'm not going to die. I yet got to live. I'm not going to exist. I got to live in this year. I got to have victory. Run the two folks and slap them with a high five and tell them this is the year of victory. Get ready to talk to some stuff. Get ready to talk to some finances. Get ready to talk to some bills. I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, he is again talking crazy. Ask somebody, do you understand God talk? Tell your neighbor, sometimes God talk sounds like crazy talk. God talk is often crazy talk. It's the kind of talk that you can't have with everybody. Oh, I'm preaching right this morning. There are certain conversations you just can't have with everybody. Uh, that, that certain conversations are reserved for folk that live by faith. Uh, because if I tell you some stuff, you're going to doubt it. If I tell you some stuff, you might just hate on me, even though it ain't happened. You know what happened to Joseph. His brothers didn't hate him until he told them something. You better be careful who you talk to this year. You better be careful who you share your dreams with. Can I drop one on you this morning? You can't even share your dreams with your spouse all the time. There's something that God will tell you. Keep it to yourself. Watch me manifest. God, I feel it up in the house. 
There are some things when you go to look at it, you better be careful who you take with you because you might just take. Ain't nothing worse than staring at your heart desire having to listen to somebody pole mouthing. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Some folk will try to talk you out of your blessing. When you get ready to live by faith, some folk will try to explain to you why you don't need to do this. And they'll be real spiritual. Well, I know you saved and all. And, and, and I know Pastor got real excited on New Year's Eve. But, 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 but now, honey, we don't need to be trying to do this, this, and this. Some of your biggest doubters are in church. I'm coming at you. Some of your biggest doubters have been saved for a long time. You be surprised folk been saved for a long time but can't believe God for nothing. But want to judge everybody on who's saved and who ain't saved. Who got the Holy Ghost and who ain't got the Holy Ghost? Who sanctified and who ain't sanctified? You need to be concerned about yourself and you need to live by faith. He tells them, you can talk to this mountain. You can tell the mountain, be removed. Be removed. Get out of my way. Not only can you talk to it, but you can tell it where to go. <laughs> be removed and be cast into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says if I don't doubt in my heart I'll have what I'm saying Whew. I said if I don't doubt in my heart I'll have what I'm saying can I say it another way if I don't doubt I'll get results see if I don't doubt God I'm going to get some results in this consecration. I said I'm going to get some results from fasting. But notice in the text, he makes it plain that doubt is a killer of results. See, doubting kills results. If you want results, don't doubt. What I mean by result, I mean if you want to see change take place, if you want to bear some fruit, don't doubt. And don't be narrow-minded when you pray. Tell your neighbor, when you're praying and asking God for something or asking God to do something, tell your neighbor, don't be narrow-minded. See, when you pray, you got to know God got over a million ways to do for you what you ask him to do. Too many times we pray and we get tunnel vision thinking that the breakthrough is coming from a certain place. But it ought to be all right with you if God chooses to do it another way. If he does it through your job, that's all right. If he uses your cousin, that's all right. But if God decides to use a stranger, it should be all right with you. Good God Almighty. Because God is going to bless his people this year from all types of ways. How many, how many received that? And so I don't need to get tunnel vision when I pray and think that God is not hearing me because it's not happening the way I thought it would happen. See, that causes a lot of us to enter into doubt when we pray because we're only looking for God to do what we ask him to do, and we want him to do it the way we want him to do it. But see, you don't understand. There will be a time or two. Well, yeah, you'll ask God to do something, but he may choose to do, do it through another avenue. 
but, but, but see, you need to be like your pastor and just let God know, Lord, any way you choose to bless me, that's all right with me. I said, any way you want to bless me, Lord, have your way, Lord. Use whoever you want to use, Lord. 